This is heart wrenching. Well, these poor people, they don't know. They don't know. And I thought, I, thought the, and I thought this degree of corruption was restricted to American capitalists and others who were equally corrupt. This is absolutely unreal. Well, let's talk about the worst corruption. I have an article from December 2003 published in an international journal. International Network of Engineers and Scientists Against Proliferation. And this is on the Internet. Everybody should read it, and I'm going to send it to you so you can post it. It's called Radiological Terrorism, Sabotage of Spent Fuel Pools. And this is the blueprint for what's going on at, at that, that re, those nuclear power plants right now. Um, so I looked at the fuel pools, and I looked at the reactors that are on fire and that blew up. And what I did was I found out that one fuel rod, which is a zirconium tube, it's called the cladding, is full of uranium pellets. It's about an inch in diameter and maybe 10 or 20 feet long. That weighs 1,200 pounds. The zirconium tube protects it from interacting with water, water or seawater or whatever they're cooling it with, and that prevents formation of zirconium oxide and hydrogen. So one rod is 1,200 pounds. It's 6% uranium-235, which is bomb-grade uranium, and that means it has 72 pounds of pure uranium in it, which would make four nuclear bombs. The bombs have a core of uranium or plutonium that's less than 20 pounds. And these rods are bundled into bundles called an assembly. So there are 60 rods in each assembly. In unit one, which is the first one that, that exploded, uh, there are 400 assemblies in the core. I calculated that in Unit 1, which is half the size of any other reactors there, because it was the first one, is the equivalent amount of uranium to make 96,000 nuclear bombs. Yikes. That's a lot of bombs. That's in a lot one, of bombs. In one reactor. And I added the uh, spent fuel pools how many tons of spent fuel, which is much more dangerous because it represents all of the fission products, which are very deadly, that form after a nuclear event, a nuclear fission process, a nuclear bomb explodes. And I found that 240 tons of those spent fuel rods are in, in three uh, cooling pools, that, guess what, Jim, they put the cooling pools on top of the reactors. No. Yes. Oh. So, what happened is, when the earthquake occurred, it damaged the pumps for the cooling, and those pumps for cooling are down by the ocean. Of course. Of course. And... Then the tsunami hit an hour later, and the backup diesel pumps are in a basement under the reactor. So that 30-foot wave went over the whole power plant and filled up the basement with water so that the diesel backup system wouldn't work. It took them until the next night, uh, 14 or 16 hours, to get the battery system working and cooling. And guess what? Meltdown starts 90 minutes after the cooling stops. And, 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 and the meltdown in this case of those rods is going to go right into the reactor. And, and, and the cooling and, system is beneath that. I mean, how, this is a very... I mean, she, it's a bizarre, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not just a Rube Goldberg arrangement, Lauren. It, it's a disaster waiting to happen. It was a disaster made to happen. 
Incredible. This is a secret nuclear war. And and a man on television, I have a Japanese uh, friend staying here who's campaigned against nuclear stuff, nuclear power plants in Japan for years. So he's been it, translating the news stories and the videos and everything that's coming out of Japan. And a Japanese man said in a TV news story, he was being interviewed, he said, this is the third nuclear war against Japan. The Number one was Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yes. Number two was the water into the reactor. It was already in meltdown, which means the zirconium uh, uh, tubes were ruptured by the uranium as it heated up it expanded and and ruptured those tubes when they started pumping water into the reactor finally when they got the battery backup system working half a day later um, the water reacted with the fuel pellets they knew it was in meltdown they knew they couldn't pump water into it they were desperate so they did it anyway and they did not poke holes in the reactor building to let the hydrogen out that forms when water reacts with fuel pellets. It forms zirconium oxide and hydrogen. So the hydrogen floated up to the top of the building, collected under the roof, and when it got down to the level where the fuel rods were in the cooling ponds, it exploded and blew the top off the building and damaged and cracked the pools so that they wouldn't hold water. The uranium rods burned down, the melted ones in the reactor burned down through the reactor shell shard, the protective uh, thing around the, the reactor, and, and all the water ran out of those holes. So this whole thing was a nuclear disaster from 90 minutes after the cooling stopped and that was right after the tsunami and they've been losing ground ever since this is unbelievable Lauren how could these have been constructed designed and constructed with so little foresight into the probable hazards they had to endure now, this, uh, this Jim no engineer would ever build a nuclear power plant like that. It's insane. It's a booby trap. It's a radioactive booby trap. It's a killing machine, a depopulation machine. It's another form of nuclear war. The way they designed these reactors and the whole physical plant is total insanity. And the emergency responders at any accident are automatically become kamikaze emergency responders and out of the 50 who were held back from the 800 that they wanted to evacuate they kept 50 there uh, five of them are dead from radiation sickness 15 are sick and the rest are going to die <laughs>